Please remain seated. The show will begin in three, two. Like a hell cut. <laughs> The Legend of La Lechuza Why, hello there. My name is Phantom Traveler 87 and welcome back to my channel. This is Season 1, Episode 3 of my web series, Creep Factor, where I go over myths and legends from all over the world. In today's creepy episode... I will be going over the origins of the infamous La Lechuza. So please, sit back and relax. Grab some popcorn, candy, or a soda of your liking. Have the lights turned out and snuggle up in a nice warm blanket. Because you're in for a fright. If this video becomes too much for you at any point, please feel free to proceed to the nearest exit or pretty much just uh, click out of this video if you care so much to have pleasant dreams tonight. And don't worry, I'm sure that you're perfectly safe. You have nothing to worry about. After all, La Lechuza isn't real. Or is she? In the Rio Grande Valley in northern Mexico, word spread like wildfire of a fierce, frightening creature that appears as a seven-foot owl with an old woman's face. It is said that she targets drunk men and children in the middle of the night. There are several variations to the creature's origin. Some say she was once a mortal woman that sought vengeance due to the cruel acts committed against her and her child. In other tellings, the creature is a witch's familiar, meaning servant, who abducts children to abide its mistress. It is also claimed that she serves Satan and feeds off the negative emotions of humans who are unfortunate to encounter her. According to the article, The Sinister Legend of La Lechusa, the Witch Owl Monster of the Rio Grande Valley in Northern Mexico, published by Austin Harvey, April 7, 2023, the creature will mimic the sound of a crying infant to draw out its victim out into the open, snatch them up, and take them back to its lair. And it is claimed that if you look at the Lalachusa's face for too long, the monster becomes enraged. On the All That's Interesting website in which that article was posted, according to Austin Harvey's conducted research, most folks in the area believe that while the creature is out hunting, its human body stays somewhere else frequently residing in a locked room, unconscious. There are countless speculations of where the creature came from. One other common theory is that the Lalachusa was the victim of murder by the hands of a drunkard, which would explain why the creature goes after intoxicated males in general. When one is badly drunk, they can be easily vulnerable in an attack by such a malevolent being. After all, owls are territorial and aggressive by nature. The Lalachusa cannot be hit by bullets, and if someone attempts to shoot it and fails to kill the beast, that person dies instead. If the creature touches even if it's just one feather from its wings, that person perishes, Dreaming of the Lalachusa is a sign of death of a family member. There are several methods of warding off a Lachusa. The most well-known method involves the incantation of prayers, or applying herbs such as chili powder and salt. In pre-Columbian Mesoamerica, indigenous people had developed spiritual bonds with animals. On an NPR Latino USA podcast, an anthropologist from a Rio Grande University by the name of Servando Z. Herosa had this to say, Life exists in many different orders. It exists in a human order of being. It exists in an animal order of being. But these were not entirely separate. There were permeable boundaries between them. 
On FanBolt.com, Sarah Henry, who was an author, photographer, and artist, she had published an article on the Lala Chusa on January 10th, 2022. And she talks about how people who drive in their cars in the dead of night on a long, dark road, they too can become unsuspecting victims of the beast, especially if they swerve their car to avoid hitting it. And if one was to exit their vehicle... To see what they had hit. Well, let's just say that poor confused driver will become the next meal for the Lalachusa. On October 14, 2021, a Kicks FM 108 radio show host by the name of Ingra had published an article on the Lalachusa. And there's a short story attached to this article that I want to share with you. In Robstown, Texas, in 1975, police were called numerous times from community members that claimed to have seen a massive bird in a wooded area between Vasquez Street and Rab Road. Some have claimed that it was the size of a human. Some claimed that the bird had a man's face. Some said it was a woman. There is a Christie Caller Times 2021 article where when the news trucks came, all calls had ended. Lala Chusa also has been known to show herself in South Texas communities such as Brownsville and San Benito. Hey guys, just a quick interruption. I just want to apologize for any background noise in this video as construction is still being done on the outside of my property. Um, it being mostly the front porch. So I do apologize for any um, uh, loud banging that you might hear in the background. Alright, let's continue. If you made it this far, awesome. And remember, at any time, if this becomes a little too scary for you, feel free to exit the video at any time. Thank you. Let's move on. The same year, a few more sightings appeared in Banquet, Texas, and then Alice, Texas. By January 1976, residents in the area within the valley reported the Lalachusa sightings. Two San Benito policemen spotted a bird with a 10 to 12 foot wingspan flying over a lagoon. Okay, guys, the article shown here in this video, as you can see, we have Detective David Escavel with the supposed La Lachusa that was shot down. Now, what's interesting is that during the time of these events in 1976, Apparently, the detective made a statement where, supposedly, some local kids had made a prank by making a dummy of the La Lachusa in order to scare residents in the area. Crazy, right? Well, that's kind of something you would expect kids to do, because kids will be kids, right? Alright, here's the actual news article with the same picture as shown. Feel free to pause the video at any time to read it at your own leisure. Now I'm going to go over an alleged earlier Lalachusa sighting that happened in the 1950s. This occurred in Nevo, Lorado. Lalachusa was terrorizing the town and the residents came up with a plan to capture the beast. It was lured out of the trees using a child as bait. The monster attempted to take the child and the locals fired at it with their guns. The bullets only hit the creature's claws. The next day... They went to the house of the Bruja that was accused of being the Lachusa, and once she had answered the door, the people had noticed that she had a bandaged leg. Okay, moving on to the next story of an alleged Lachusa encounter, this Reddit user wishes to remain anonymous. So apparently in the 1990s or early 2000s, a nine-year-old was home alone watching Spongebob. <gasps> okay, I'm sorry, I have to say this. Why in the world would anyone leave their child at any age home alone, especially a nine-year-old kid? So anyway, the story takes place in San Antonio, Texas, between two little towns called Von Orme and Lytle. The sun had just begun to set, and it was a full moon that night. The kid heard noises outside, and they thought it was their father returning home from work. So naturally, the child went outside to greet their dad. But it wasn't their dad. It was a massive owl.
The owl had jet black hair, and it was sitting on a picnic table right across the street. It had stared at the child for about another 15 minutes before the dad had finally came home. The child later talked to their grandmother, explained to them what had happened. The grandmother had did a prayer for them while cleaning an egg and told them the legend of La Lachusa. The child, however, wasn't afraid. They had thought that the owl was a harbinger giving them a warning of something to come. The most disturbing thing about this story is the fact that there was a huge storm and the only two things that weren't damaged was the house and the picnic table. Creepy, right? Okay, guys, this concludes today's episode. Please stay tuned for Season 1, Episode 4 of my web series, Creep Factor. Please like and subscribe to show your support. And stay tuned for more. Thank you so much, guys. Bye-bye.